Welcome to Tech Talk Live. You guys know that one of my favorite guests to be able to have on here is the Profiles Girls, and I have lots of stories to share today from way back when. But welcome, Amy and Tracy from Profiles Backstage. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. So just so you guys know, we had a little bit of technical things. They can't see themselves. Only we can see them. And I don't see it so, on your page either. Give it a moment. Okay. Okay. All right. We're going to give it a minute. We're going to trust you. It's all good. <laughs> I promise you. And so thanks, you guys, for joining in and for all the people who always love to come and be a part of our Tech Talk. So if you have any questions for the girls from Profiles, um, that's what we're here for, and to learn a little bit about how they get into the nail industry, what their next steps are, and all of that. Okay, so I can find it on my phone. Can you see it yet? Mm, nope. No? Right? I it don't doesn't know. like Is not part of the group, maybe? Or should it be public? No, well, I know. I'm pretty sure Amy's in the group. Mm. Oh, oh well, there, there we are. We are. It wasn't there we are. Oh. Can you Hi. see it? Can you see me now? Yes, I can <laughs> see you can see now. now. <laughs> okay, so we're good. Wonderful. Okay. Sometimes you guys know that the technical part is is there, but we always make it work no matter what. And so just like in the nail industry, it takes practice, it takes time, it takes patience, and then we get perfection like this. So anyways, so let's go back and introduce you guys a little bit. So we have Amy McClure and Tracy Junk Duncan with us. Um, sisters in the industry that still get along after all these years of working together, sure. being related and all of that. So let's go back and let's talk about how each of you got started into the nail industry. Okay, that was totally me first. <laughs> and I think you made fun of me for going I to totally school. did. I'm like, are you going to school? Right, I said I was going to real college. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and look at where we are I now. did it for two years and got out of it. Actually, I was going to school to be a teacher. So it's funny that I always had the passion to educate really, right. but I didn't know it wasn't, it wasn't sixth graders though. No, mm -mm. Well, yeah. <laughs> us nail techs are a special bunch. <laughs> <laughs> I like nail techs better than sixth graders. Yeah. Sorry. Just <laughs> Sorry. It wasn't it. I did it for a little bit and I was like, Ooh, I don't think this is for me, but so cheers to teachers. So, right. Right. True. Yeah. Little so, did you know that after all these years, you would still be teaching and almost right. like our path sets us up for the future. We just had no clue at the time. So, yep. and sometimes don't you find that we have to almost um, down it a little bit and, and teach it step by step, like we would be teaching a sixth grader, right? you know, put it into that much detail. Yeah. yeah. Not in a bad way. I mean that no, in no. a good way. No, no, bad way. We can teach, and that's the thing. We can teach a very advanced person something, or we can teach a brand new person. And in our yeah. salon, we get a lot of new people right out of high school, or right out of beauty school. Right. Right. You know, yeah. Put it into that much detail. Perfect. Perfect. So, and so Amy started doing nails. I ended up coming with her. We were sitting around one night saying, I hated my bartending job. And we were like, we should just open up our own place. And then we just. <laughs> <laughs> and it started out with just two of us and then there was a third person and when she was ready to kind of spread her wings and do her own thing and she was thinking about opening her own shop we said well why don't you just open another profiles so that is how it all started right yeah absolutely born. and there it began so how'd you come up with the name profiles <laughs> It was between that or no, him. but we were literally looking at a phone book because back then there was phone books, right. remember? <laughs> yeah. We were looking at a phone book and we were like, where would a really trendy salon be? Let's look up salon names in Beverly Hills. Right. And we found one called Profilers and we shortened it and made it our own. And that's, I think you were gunning for the hang 10. Oh, hang 10, right? And tan right? or something. Yeah, hang 10 and tan. <laughs> we're going to have tanning too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Amy, why did what inspired you to become an tech? Well, funny, I always wanted to do hair. So I went to cosmetology school, went through the whole cosmetology training. And honestly, ever since I can remember, it's kind of what I always have wanted to do. So after hair school, I tried like all different situations. Like I was in a barber shop, I was in a high end salon, I was in a booth rental situation. And I just never found a place that it was I don't know if it wasn't homey for me or if it just 
I just didn't feel like the creativity was there. So after about a couple, maybe six or eight months of trying different salons, I got a waitressing job. And then I was like, what am I doing? Just go try the nail thing. So I gave it, you know, I, I, I applied at like Volpe Nails, which was my very first job ever. <laughs> I got the job. And when I got hired, she said, well, we only do sculptured nails here. We don't do tips. And I'm like, oh, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll see how long this lasts. And guess what? It's going on. What? How many years now? 25. 20 plus. Yeah. Which, yep. That's crazy. So apparently I really liked it. And I think what made me feel or fall in love with it is the creativity and the trust that your clients have. I, I mean, it, it was just different than mm -hmm. him. And Absolutely. apparently and it's done nothing it. but get better. Right. Yeah, exactly. And that we've been able to prove through all these years because January was 27 years for me wow. that all these people that I remember like, and at the time it was the guy that I was dating, but I remember his mom saying, you're going to do what? And right. now r my original plan was to be a paramedic. And I was already a basic emergency care person. I was already an EMT and my family was all hairdressers. And I thought if I could just be a nail tech and just do nails, then I knew I could work it around the other job. And as a paramedic, right. you, right. you work like so many days in a row and you have a law off and I knew how to run a salon. So I completely understand where you're coming from. I didn't look at it as a real job. And right. never did I think that I would be in this industry for this many years. Yeah. And I remember yeah. her there saying, there be so much to offer someone. Yeah. I remember her saying like, if all you do is polish nails, like you're going to waste your talent on that because that many years ago, we had gel, we had acrylic, we had wraps. It was funny. We have the same systems we have now. They just weren't as popular with more manicures, pedicures while the ladies were in their shampoo sets, you know? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I want to go through in the comments a little bit here. I just want to say good morning to everybody. Of course, you know, I used to go through and say all your names and then I realized I was spending half the tech talk saying hi to everybody. So I just do a general. Hello. Hello. Katie Barnes Hello. is on here. And I don't know if you guys know that Katie, I met Katie um, last year. She's from the UK and she came on the nail cruise with us and Katie just signed up to come over to nail camp. So she's going to come over and Katie says, looking forward to meeting you ladies at nail camp. Awesome. Yeah, Katie is amazing. Not only an amazing instructor, just a person herself. So I'm excited about awesome. that. Brittany Jackson says, hey, guys, and star. <laughs> and lots of hellos. And of course, Candy um, Leg is on here and says, miss you guys. Aww. So this is your opportunity. Any questions that you guys might have for Amy and Tracy from competitions to their product lines to, of course, I'm going to ask what's coming up next, but this is your time to ask some questions. This is an open book for us. But talking about an open book, I did a live with um, with you guys, maybe it was a last year, it was, it was towards the first time I started doing Tech Talks. And um, I remember telling a story that I had gone to Las Vegas to the international, one of the international, I don't know, nail Olympias or something like that. And I was competing for my very first time. And um, it came for them announcing the awards. And I was sitting midways towards the back and you were sitting in the front corner of the right. And I remember them announcing Amy from Puh and I'm Amy from Perfect 10. And so I remember Diane was with me, one of my ladies, and she was going to take a picture. And I stood up and I realized that you stood up at the same time. It was Amy from Profiles. And I remember Diane taking a picture. And for years I had somewhat of this picture. So I went searching this morning in old boxes of old salon advertising and stuff like that, that for some reason I've saved, but I realized it set me up for online training that I can prove these are the things that we've tried in the past and they're still working today. And so I came across some pictures that that cracked me up. And I don't know why, but I saved some article, Amy, about you. And I wanna share that a little bit. First of all, here was a picture. Now this was 2003. Here's a picture of us waiting to hear our instructions about the competition. So if, and I posted this online just a little while ago. So if, if any of you have been in the industry, 
this long and you are in this picture, tag yourself and tell me where. Now I try, it's a grainy old picture and I tried to like blow it up. Yeah. Like to see. I can't recognize anybody in there, but. Oh my God. We have so many old competition pictures. Isn't it? Oh, it yeah. I'm so glad I saved some of these because yeah, some yeah. of these are even Polaroids that who knows why I saved what I do, but I did. But this was an article. Look at Amy. Okay. I It's from Nail Pro, February of 2003. And I had ripped it out. And I looked at the back and it's about pedicures. And I thought, I must have ripped this out for this. And so it's weird that after all these years, it was sitting on top of that box. So I was like, it was meant to be. So it was the Survival Challengers. And you were one of the finalists. Um, Amy McClure was profiles um, from Florida. The question was, where do you see yourself professionally in 10 years? Now that would have made it 2013. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's your answer. At Vicki Peters' dun, desk. Dun. Yeah, at Vicki <laughs> Peters' desk. Right. What That's did you mean by that? Like sitting there being a customer or being Vicki? I don't know. To, to continue on, it says, Vicki is a huge role model to me. I'd love to follow her career path. I have such a passion for educating and motivating that I've inquired about opening a school and becoming an educator for a product line. I have a lot to accomplish before I can be up there with Vicki, but I've got to start somewhere. I love this. Yeah, so, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, so I was going back through that same competition. There's me, my model, and Vicky. I remember Vicky coming over, and uh, I didn't really know her that much at that time. You know, I had the nail magazines and stuff, but I remember her coming over and giving me like an honorable mention for my entry. And um, it was one of those life changing things. When I got home and I realized who it was, I about freaked out. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, we were intimidated for by her, and then we became really close to her. She has quite the presence. Yeah, Vicky does. <laughs> yes. She does. <laughs> Still today, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So it asked, what specific plans do you have to reach that goal? Now, do you want me to keep reading? It's a little bit longer, yeah. but I think it's worth it. Okay. It says, I have quite a road ahead of me, but I have a plan. I've been the opportunity to train and motivate in my salon for more than five years, which in essence has trained me to reach my ultimate goal. In addition to salon ownership, I've recently applied for an educator position with a product line, an excellent way for me to start exploring new ground and educate myself outside the salon. I am also experimenting with new products and techniques, which isn't this crazy? You still do this today. Right. Um, this is a challenge for me since I've spent most of my career perfecting one type of enhancement. That's still all of us yeah. today. Yeah. Funny, right? yep. yep. I want to devote as much time as possible to competing, which motivates me. It's hard to travel to shows more than a couple times a year, but I'm determined to become one of the big dogs in the competition arena. <laughs> Eventually, I would enjoy judging and the directing competitions. Within the next five years, I'd like to either open a nail school or have a state accredited training available in my salon where I can educate one-to-one -one and also offer classes and continuing education. This industry has so much to offer, yet we lose potential top techs due to inadequate training. Now, with all this experience and hopefully a new a few trophies taller than me, I can meet my ultimate goal to become a top educator and motivator in our industry, a mentor. Amy, do you know how powerful this was from 2003 for you to say that? Wow. And you've not only accomplished all of this, but you went way, way up and beyond all of this. And you're still doing it and you're still passionate. Like I could see you writing the same thing again today. I mean, I, I'm pretty impressed with my, right. I'm impressed with my you. fortune telling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> However, I don't, you know, our hair, you know, we got to love, we got to love the early 2000s and all of our oh, hair. I, oh, I still, I still have my, that hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So Amy, uh, do you kind of still feel the same way? Do you still feel that same passion? 
I do. And, you know, just hearing like what my goals were back then and still feeling like there's still so much more, I feel like Tracy and I want to accomplish. And um, I mean, still with the salons and still with the training. And it's funny that you even mentioned, or I even mentioned about opening an, an accredited school, which Tracy and I did try to do probably about eight years ago, mm-hmm. nine years ago, yeah. maybe longer. Mm-hmm. But unfortunately, and I, it's different from state to state, but Tracy and I really gunned for more of an apprenticeship school because I think that techs would learn so much more about the industry and so much more about um, working in a salon, working for other people, um, but they don't, they don't allow it. I mean, it's all money and licensing and it's all things that don't really matter. So unfortunately we had to kind of give up on that, but we do advanced training for techs that are already licensed. So yeah, that was right. And we have probably 70 or so 75, maybe techs that work in our profile salons because this is our hub Lee County. And we, we do a lot of training for our techs. Yeah. Luck. We're lucky that we get to do that. We are. Yeah, absolutely. I'm the same way in Wyoming. I can train techs that are already licensed. I don't want to go to teach them just their basics from the school. And you know, another thing too, is once they're already licensed, they're more dedicated. They're more willing to try and they listen. They want to learn, yes. Yeah, and so I find that they're more passionate about it, mm-hmm. which drives me even further You know, yeah. with that. So one of the things that you guys um, started this year is kind of bringing on other, you know, independent consultants and allowing them to be able to be a a promoter with you. And so where was the idea for that? Um, I think Tracy and I sometimes focus so much on our local salons. And I would say like within the past year, we've gotten so much love from like outside texts. They're like, we want to work with you. When, when's the next show you're going to be at? I want to work the booth with you. We want to do And I feel like also it, the way it happened, it it was like the path was, it carved itself almost. Right. We're working with people like Gina Silvestro and um, I mean, so many top educators that are, they don't, they're not, um, not that they're not owned by a product line, but they work for a product or they're a distributor or they're, they do classes for a product line that doesn't use our products, similar mm-hmm. products. Right. So right. what happens is they do, um, like Becky did a class, Becky was will give that girl a shout out. So yeah. she also is an accent educator. And uh, if you haven't noticed, we love accents and <laughs> they're, they're definitely one of our, uh, buddies in the industry, but we use different products, right? So it's complementing products. So when Becky has uh, accents class, then she wants to do some topical art. So use some of our stuff. So it's mm-hmm. almost like we decided we play well with others, right? Because yeah. we're, we're working with products that, um, you know, accents doesn't have a, a foil thing or, you know, I just feel like we're all complementing each other. Right. And I also feel like it, because we've gotten a lot bigger this past year, it's like, we can't reach everybody anymore. Right. And that's been like, like a hard thing for Tracy and I is delegation because we always feel like we can do everything. So this year it was kind of our goal to start like delegating and start getting other, I mean, other techs, there's so many, so much talent out there and these girls want to go do classes, but a lot of these girls are like, I don't know how to do it. So we are dedicating a lot of time this year to educate educators and mm-hmm. helping them get out there. Right. And, 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 some and not, not own an educator. That's the other right. thing. I talked to so many educators. Jen Halfon, she's a huge friend of ours in the nail industry and amazing personally nail tech. an amazing nail tech. And, you know, it, it, it's like to her to be an independent educator, um, she can teach people what she wants to teach them. She mm-hmm. loves teaching, but sometimes you don't want to use every single thing from one line, right? So <laughs> I, I want to use this bit and this top coat and this, and we all know because we're nail techs and it's like a hairstylist that has 20 different products on her station. So I think Amy and I, because we're salon techs, we realize that and we don't really beat people up about it. We don't, I don't know. I mean, I get it. Business is business and there's competition and all that good stuff. But eventually what we want to do is just educate people to use the right products for the right things. How about just educate people to be successful? Yeah. Educate. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Right. Ah. Yeah, and all the hearts, all the love that you guys are getting, all these people definitely agree with you. And I think that's one of the reasons why you guys have been able to shine, um, or as your shirt said, sparkle above everybody else is because of that way of thinking. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
Uh, Grace on here says, um, good morning, Nate, ladies. See you all at nail camp. Good morning. Yeah. And so, now, you guys have done nail camp before, correct? No, this will be our first time. Oh, this is my first time, too. I don't really know what to expect. And I kind of want to already sign up for Idaho because I really like this type of thing. But I want to see what this is like first. Uh -huh. And so do you want to talk a little bit about the classes that you're going to be offering at nail camp? I mean, our goal this year with all of our classes, not just nail camp, we're kind of getting a little bit back to basics. Yep. And training educators to... Um, make a little bit more money on the side, training people, doing some classes. Um, I mean, we're definitely, we're pulling it back to basics this year. We feel like out there and not, so this is not just at nail camp. When we do our year of shows, we kind of try to focus on one thing and that was our focus this year. So mm -hmm. nail camp, we'll be doing a lot of nail structure because I feel like people are piling all this art on and not doing anything with the structure. We are going to pile smart on that. But we're going to pile smart on too. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but, but I know I what you mean. Like it's, everybody yeah. needs to get back to a good, a good nail. Yeah, exactly. No matter what product you use, no matter gel, acrylic, I don't care what brand. Yeah. It's, yeah. It, it, that's so, and there's nothing like a nice sleek nail underneath your good art. So yeah. I feel like that's gone by the wayside. So we'll be doing a lot of that. We do have some fun new products we'll be bringing out. Um, Cause we're always into fun new products. We're salon girls. Our clients yeah. love it. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. You know, and that's another thing that sets you guys apart is being a salon tech. Um, and I can't stress that enough, like even with myself, being a salon tech has really made me a better educator because yep. I know what it's like to build the business. And I've had to move my business three times. And now I'm, a, I'm in a studio where I'm by myself. So I understand the big salon. I understand the studio where you're alone and trying to build it up out of your home. Like I get it. And I also know that it's hard for a salon techs to travel to get the education we need. Mm -hmm. So we're so thankful that we can either plan ahead and schedule and go to certain shows and be able to meet with people like you that can educate us, or we can go to your website and get additional education. What's great about you guys, you guys are so personable. Like you can call your company and talk with an actual human and get some answers on your products. And that's, that's sad to say, but it's very rare these days to be able to do that. And I think that's just, and it's helping, and right. Are. And it's helping us also just build a very organic, a very solid client base for us. And it's, it's awesome. It's a yeah. really good feeling. I mean, yeah. we're not Insta famous, but <laughs> <laughs> we don't have 200 K followers, but I do, I, I feel like we're very proud of the customer base we've built because we have a really good relationship with them. It's a huge thing. And I, and we're still running the salon. So yes. our slow and steady climb has really been for the better for right. us. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Brittany says that her and Amber actually won tickets to Nail Pro Pasadena um, for California and want to know if you guys are going to be teaching a profiles class there. Yeah, yeah, it's on their website. Yep. There you go, Miss Brittany. And congratulations on winning some tickets. Absolutely. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, so Ramona says, how do you determine which products that you want to carry? A lot of it is trending stuff. Um, a lot of it's art, topical art. We're big into topical art because we work with these other companies. And also I'm trying to keep my salon. So we have this like salon mentality. I want my salon to stand out in my area, right? So I want to have products that not everybody around me has. So we're always looking for cool looks. And I'm sure everybody can relate to the client that brings in the picture from Pinterest. And you're <laughs> like, because <laughs> you know that right. somebody took three hours to do that. And it's all these steps. And it's, so we're just all about easy, can but I, impressive. I, I'm going to say something too. I don't, I don't say you could talk. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Listen, big sis. I'm, gonna take the, I'm taking the talking stick for a minute. I just want to mention, we're always, I am like huge on professionalism in the salon and the products that we're using, I always say it's a professional product is what you should have on your desk. A lot of nail techs with, I mean, it's so easy to source anything. You can go to Wish and pay a dollar for Chrome. You can go to Amazon or AliExpress and buy all this dollar nail art. You can go to Michaels and buy glitter. Just remember these companies that are putting out professional products for you, they are packaging for you. They are um, making sure these products are durable and that they work well with gels and acrylic 
and no reactions on skin. So just nail techs need to keep that in mind because if I hear one more time from a nail tech at a show, I'll just go get that on Wish for a dollar. Well, you're gonna wait probably about four weeks for it and who knows what you're getting. Mm -hmm. So, so as, a, as a product manufacturer, I think it's important that we keep it professional. Mm -hmm. So you always have professional products with, you know, whatever, like yes. I said, the topical art, the chromes, the, the mm -hmm. we, again, we just want, we want to find cool stuff that's professional. Yes. Yeah. And, and from a reliable, yeah, manufacturer. Well, and to, I think it's important. To tie into that, how many times have these girls posted in these groups that I've ordered this from XYZ company and this is what really came? It looks right. like this, but yeah, this right. is what came. And the texture is not the same. And I used a professional one and it's not the same. It applies right. differently. And then they come to us for troubleshooting. And it's like, right. well, where did you get that? And I like, hmm. And I've never ordered from AliExpress. I ordered clothes from Wish one time and I ordered them for my daughter. And I can tell you one time because it did not look like the picture. And it came, right. my daughter was small at the time and it came like infant small. Right. And oh, so you don't know what you're getting. And I couldn't call a person and talk to a person to exchange it, refund it, whatever. And so I stick with professionals. Plus I, in the nail industry, I stick with people that I believe in the company. I believe in um, that they back their product line. They've been in business for a long time. You guys are tried and true. You've played with the products that you get before you promote them. Yeah. You are innovative in what you do and creating like even your subscriptions being you know all of that it's I would rather support that than right. any and as a nail tech, we, I mean yes we love to hear that but you know also like you nail techs you know this is what you're giving your clientele mm -hmm. this is the name that you're putting out there for yourself too because yeah. I don't know my clients will sit down and be they our clients want to know how your clients are only getting big I know they are too <laughs> and they love it they but are they want to know things they're like they totally oh, what are. is this well how does this work I mean and uh, Facebook Live and Instagram, everything is so out there. Clients are way, way more knowledgeable. knowledgeable. Uh, they know way more than some probably should. But yeah. um, we just got to keep it professional. And uh, yeah. ask yourself that question when you're buying products. Yeah, absolutely. So Brittany said earlier that um, it, you guys brought her to tears. Hashtag goals. So I'm assuming that, you know, she, Aww. I know she wants to be an educator. I can't wait to go back and read all the comments. Yeah. Um, Mary Lee says, uh, we use a lot of your products. Um, Genesis says, um, it's awesome that educators and product lines can play with each other like that. And so absolutely. Yep. I feel like we're in a really good network with a lot of really great educators that use a lot of different products and, I just, it's, it's just so good. It's like a win, win, win for everybody. Right. Yeah. Well, just like what you guys did with the promoter thing. I know I signed up immediately when I saw the video and was able to already use that once. And so exactly that being able to, I'm an independent as well. And even though I'm with um, Light Elegance just brought me on, but even with Light Elegance, they're allowing me to stay independent. And I think more and more companies are allowing that because they realize that they don't carry every product. And so therefore it holds the tech or the instructor back when they that don't helps. have you know, brushes and you need the brushes, you know, or they of don't course. have the glitter or, you know, whatever it is. And so it's, right. it's great to see the top companies like you guys working together like that. I mean, another person to give a shout out to Phoenix, she's, she's been doing some stuff for us too, and is thoroughly enjoying being an independent educator. She works for um, Coupa a lot of the yeah. time, but um, we have such a great relationship with these companies. Like, they, you know, it's like, she can use a little bit uh, 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 if as long as Koopa doesn't carry it. And, you know, I feel like she's and similar educators are coming into their own because they want to teach the way they want to teach. And they have so much um, passion to teach that exactly what you said, nobody wants to hold these people back anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly like that. Um, so Mary Let it all says, out, girl. Let right. it out. <laughs> Mary Lee says, how do you divide your business responsibilities between each other? This, I mean, honestly, when we decided we were going to open a salon together, I we told our father, and he's like, are you guys sure you want to get into business together? We were young. We were like, yeah, this is totally going to work. <laughs> and, I mean, it didn't take us 
but a couple years for us to kind of know each other's roles. And I think through the years, I mean, it, it's been that easy for us. Like I, it should, I deal with the products. Tracy deals with the technicians or, I mean, Tracy does the hiring. I mean, it's, it. I don't know. It just kind of it, fell into and place. And I just think when there's a decision to be made on something, it's we don't really argue about it or I mean, we might debate a little bit, but ultimately if it's something about product, it's going to be her decision. Or, and if it's something about our booking system, she just, whatever you buy, whatever you get, whatever, because right. I know what works or it's just, we kind of know who has the better decision, the more <clears throat> educated decision on a certain right issues. So mostly yeah. I'm in the salon and mostly Amy's over here at the office. Right. You know, and that's interesting because like I've interviewed, you know, young nails, you know, brothers again and other people yeah. in the industry like that. One seems to be more business sense. Yeah. One seems to be more willing to be on camera. One is more about wanting to be at the shows and be the people person. And the other one wants to be more behind the scenes and ordering and all of that. And it, it, you're right. Once you figure out whose role and you work within that strength and communication yeah. like even if you're not sisters and you have business partners or you have booth Absolutely. renters in your salon if you don't have the communication and to say this is what I want to do by next year even mm -hmm. um, you know what do you think and get everybody's input and come up with that decision and so obviously you guys have perfected that over the years because what you guys have is truly amazing and I agree it's like hashtag goals <laughs> We're, we're, we're lucky. We've we literally spend every page. single day together. Literally. Like, we're not breaking I'm, up. I know we're not breaking up. I'm building up. <laughs> me and my husband are building a house. We're building a house in the neighborhood right behind Ame. Um, our, luckily, our husbands are friends, which is great. But we, I mean, we do have a lot of the same qualities. We do both want to be at the shows. We do both want to, I mean, we definitely have a lot of the same qualities also. And there's sometimes things are a hot potato. I'm like, you deal with this. She's like, no, you deal with them. I'm like, nope, nope, this one's you. So, I mean, it, we've drawn straws. <laughs> you call that's, this person back. That's more alive. That's no different than a husband and a wife or a mother, daughter, anything like that. That's just real life. I love that you called it hot potato, though. Right. That kind of takes us back a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Um, so Rebecca says, hello. And Marilee says, I love that you are all about easy and fast. Yes. And so exactly that. A a salon salon mm -hmm. And listen, we all do this because we love it and we're lucky. It is a luxury to love what we do. It is. But let's be honest, we need to make money. So, yeah. I, I mean, I know through the years, like Tracy's husband was in um, construction when things went really bad here. She was like the only one supporting her family for a little mm -hmm. while. And I mean, my husband did also do some work with um, the industry. He did some of our distribution of products. So it's almost like we need to make money. I know a lot of our girls in the shop, they're single moms or they live by themselves and they do really well. So if it's not about time and money, I mean, that's just bottom line sometimes. Mm -hmm. And do we all love to dabble think and dream stuff? Sure. But what yeah. we want to do is teach people how to get behind the desk, make money. You want to get out from behind the desk? We have another way for you to make money. Uh, you're burnt right. out behind the desk, doing nails all day, every hour on the hour. Let's get out and teach some people. You want to go yeah. to beauty shows? We can help you with that. We just, uh -huh. there's so many parts of this industry that people are just stuck behind a desk. <laughs> and, you know, it, whether it be building yourself up behind a desk and building yourself a solid clientele and separating yourself from everybody around you and charging more, well, that's a win. Right. Yeah. And love what you do. And right. win, win. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I've done a lot of these interviews. I think we're, I think we're close to like 90 tech talks. Plus I've interviewed way before I called it tech talk. Wow, and I know and I am loving it still. I, I still get nervous before every single one, but it doesn't matter. It's the, by the time we're live and the conversation gets going like this, mm -hmm. I'm more passionate about it and I, and it continues on, but, um, Oh, I got a little bit distracted of what we, we, we I was going to add to what you guys were saying. Um, oh, I've done a lot of interviews and some of the interviews I've asked them, you know, OK, so you were on the cover of this magazine or you posted this picture on Instagram the other day. How much do you charge for and how long did it take? 
And one of the top people that posts constantly, she does one person a day, it's $250. It's a full set every single time so that she can have the perfect stilettos every single time and five hours. Well, you go girl. Yeah. Again, if you're in the area or the position to be able to do that, it's amazing. And I'm not putting that, I'm not saying that that's an easy job either, but I would say 90% of our industry mm -hmm. are working nail techs that are trying to build a clientele, working on the hour because where we are, we're just in little Southwest Florida. There's no magazine shoots. No. There's no, yeah. Right. Cover photos. You got to do Sally's nails with perfect red Susan. Puns. Susan. 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 <laughs> We all know. I mean, when we talk to people, it's like we relate. We get it. I mean, Amy had a member of Christy who's eating a Big Mac while you're doing a yes. gel Yeah. And God love her. I just, I'm, we're just being real. We're just like, we want to help techs. you be real techs and make real money and charge a little bit more. And you can do that. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean. Yeah. So the, the truth is, though, is be real. When the client comes in with a picture that's from Pinterest that Thank might, you. Have, like what you said earlier, be that three to five hour tech and what they charged for it, be honest with the client. Yeah, I can achieve do. this look, but this is what it's going to cost because of the time that's involved and the products. Yeah. And I'm, I'm, I need to mark off this much time to be able to accomplish that yeah. and let them know that that's not just an achievable salon look. And just be honest, I've had a, a, a lady, I actually, through the tech talk group, I was able to contact the original artist and it was a Halloween one where it glowed in the dark, but it had the characters were painted on it. And I mean, it was very intricate and beautiful. Now I know my talents. I know that with time I could recreate that, right. but I also knew that this time? client right. didn't want to pay for it either. And this client was known for being late all the time. So anyways, I contacted her and asked her, how much did you charge? How long did it take? What products did you use? I have a client that wants this. And of course she openly shared it with me, $75. And it was a fill with the art and it took her four hours. Wow. So I screenshotted it and I sent it to my client and I said, so I'm gonna tell you, she had done that design before. I'm going to think that this is definitely going to take me because you want a full set. You want the extreme lengths with the art. I think it's going to take me four or five hours and I'm going to charge you $150. And I thought I was giving her a good deal because I full think set, that's a great deal. Right. Because this was a full set with full like extreme art, which I love to do art. And she was like, oh, I'm not paying that. I'm like, okay, well, you know, I'm not doing it then right. and never to do it. But I then had it set in my mind that I so badly wanted to try that art. And so on another client that came in that was willing to pay extra and it was a fill and not a full set, I was able to do it in three hours and I was able to, you know, kind of mimic the art. And so I was proud of setting the goal, but it really some of the people won't pay for it when they realize what really goes into it. And so what you guys have to offer is more real. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Anita says we need to continue to support each other in the industry. And absolutely. I know. Absolutely. Yeah. Alyssa says, are you ladies coming to the Philly show this year? I wish we, I don't think we are. We haven't ruled it out though. Okay. We're, we're, we're contemplating. Right. We're trying yes. to see if we can get it into mm -hmm. our schedule. Um, Bernice says, is your profiles class for sculptures for speed? Yeah, everything we do is for, and I wouldn't call it speed, but it's definitely a time. Uh, we're definitely always about conserving time. So when we do this, what we do is teach people where they're, they could save time, right. but not to, I mean, I've been to a couple of classes where somebody was proud of a 30 minute full set, which is fine. But what we do is teach people how to make money in their hour time spot. And yes. I know it sounds kind of generic, but if you're working on the hour, um, and your client brings in a picture and this is what I can do. I mean, we're all about kind of making it work in the salon, or no matter what hour spot in an hour spot, because we think we have it dialed in for the hour spot and the money. Right. Hard and hard. what, what our clients want to pay. Exactly. I mean, our, a lot we're of definitely a little bit higher pay. in our area, but I mean, we're $45 for, uh, you know, your art backfills, um, which is average, but higher ish right it's and we charge a little bit extra for any 3d Swarovski stones um but flowers you know we are yes we do teach i don't want to call it speed but we do a lot of e-filing so we teach how to be really efficient efficient yes. with your time mm -hmm. yep yep
and consistent doing the same thing. Yes. yes. I, I, I'm teaching a class right now called inspire your desire. And one of the things is, is can you be repetitive? Our job, you have to be continuously repetitive. And it, even though it's a different client and different set of nails in front of you, your system has to be repetitive. The art gets to be different, but if you cannot be repetitive, you can't do any job out there. Every job from a bank to working at a grocery store to the high end CEO jobs, everything they do is consistent and repetition, repetition, repetition. And the repetition is mastering a skill. Once you've mastered it and you get your time down, those one hours don't seem like, oh my gosh, I have to do that in an hour, hour and a half. It seems less scary because it's the practice and the repetition the whole time. Yes. Yeah. Anita said there's so many branches of this tree. And I, I think what she's meaning is that we as nail techs can take so many different areas of this yeah. career and make it whatever we want. Exactly. And when we look at each other as a whole, just how big and beautiful our industry is and that we can we can make it what we want. Exactly. Yeah. So wonderful. Um, Alyssa's keeping her fingers crossed. So you know, you guys are going to have to hurry up and make a decision because keeping your fingers crossed for a long time, it might stay that way. Is, when is Philly? Does anybody know that's watching? Um, we'll ask. So when is Philly this year? A Grace says, what level of expertise is the three-hour class at Nail Camp? Bring in the sexy back sculpting. Right. It's, we start, it's, right. It's bringing, bringing sculpting back, but I call yep. it bringing sexy yep. back. So yeah. I would say sexy anywhere, sculpting. anywhere from... <laughs> beginner to intermediate yeah really we'll get a lot out of the class if you're an, a really advanced sculptor and you've got your time down we will try to hit on a few extreme shapes but most of it is going to be salon it's wearable fit. um it's, fit. it's from start to finish on your nails um you know a lot of people just the sleekness of a nail of you know you're just you're filing you're we do a lot of e-filing so that'll be um pretty big Shaping. in there you know a lot of people have a uh drawer full of bits and then on what to use them for um just efficiency and a good nail underneath with without your lifting problems without um that's a huge thing you know mm -hmm. keeping the product away from the cuticle just everything yeah yeah absolutely um so the show is september 15th and 16th right yep so we just haven't gone that far ahead yet right mm -hmm. I'm going to be at the Utah nail show and I think it's somewhere around that time frame. Right. And it was pretty fun. Not as big as a, uh, you know, Pasadena and some of those. I but... believe it's the same. That might be close to the same weekend of Sacramento too. Mm. I don't know. We'll have to look at it, but yes, it, it was on our radar, but we don't know if we're going yet. Okay. We have heard good things about it though. Yes. Yeah. Um, Brittany says, um, that's kind of what I was wondering about the sculpting class in Pasadena. Full set normally takes her two and a half hours. Now, oh, I've seen, that time down. you guys know Brittany, though. We've seen her work. She's a perfectionist. Everything that she does, her shaping, her art, everything is good. So I think two and a half hours to create the nails that she's doing, I think is fabulous. So, okay. and Brittany, I've met you in person, so you know that. I think your timing is good. Obviously, we can look at ourselves and are we chatting too much during our appointment? Sure, right. Are we chatting and working? How much time are you taking with your prep? Right. Are you prepared and organized right. when their client you comes? We can take time with the structure, but art, I mean, it, it is what it is with art, with your timing. You know, yeah. no yeah. one yeah. Set themselves up for the art stuff because you're either going to charge for it or, you know, you're not getting paid for your time. Right yeah. Now. I've showed up in many salons and I'll ask them, I'm like, okay, because, you know, I'm sitting at their desk to teach. So I'm like, okay, just looking at them, their, their setup, I see that they're unorganized. They have to go here for a file. They yeah. have to go here right. for. You just need someone to tell you that. Yeah. And they don't realize the organization to where it's at their reach and they always know where it's at. You know, it's that repetition thing again. And so the setup that they have, I think is so important as well. Yeah. yeah, and you mentioned also being prepared. That's another big thing. When these clients are coming in asking for a lot of art, you're not really sure what they're coming in asking for until you see the picture. And I don't think we realize sometimes how much time it takes us to break the art down, go figure out what products we need. So mm -hmm. that's that's also a big thing too. So what we do in the salon is when that client brings that picture in, we will talk and consult about that as we're prepping. And yeah. 
you know, as I'm prepping, I know I've got a few minutes to think in my head, all right, how am I going to break this down? Is this a design I can really give her in this amount of time? So mm -hmm. we kind of try to like do two things at once, which yeah. is a little bit of time. Some of my clients that like that extreme art and they know that they're at the end of the day. So they know they get the extra time. I make them send me the picture before they come. Oh, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. That way, and, I, and then I'm honest with them. You know what? I the the ring finger alone <laughs> on both on one and each hand is going to take you know a good half an hour or something yeah. like that. And you're yeah. wanting that on all ten. So let's retalk and visit this. Are you sure you want it on all ten? Because this is how much it's going to cost. Yeah. And so sometimes they lower it down, but I'm honest with them. And sometimes they're like, I want it on all ten. I'm going on vacation. I will pay it, and well, that, and but, that's fine, right? right. But that's at least I, yeah, I know in advance what they're bringing to me. Right. And a lot of our techs too have the same clients coming every two weeks, so it's like they almost already know what their clients are going to be asking for. But then these newer girls that are getting the walk-ins, these are the ones that have a hard time keeping on time because they have no idea. These are new clients that are walking in the door. You don't know what kind of product is on them. Yeah. So yeah. you just got to exactly. troubleshoot and do the best you can when it's yeah. your client. Okay. So let's go back a little bit. Um, first of all, are you guys still competing? No. Okay. Are you guys judging? Yes. Yes. I knew that part of it. And that's really cool because being a competitor for all that time, you guys get to judge. It is on my goal sheet. I do. I've judged some online stuff, but I really do want to judge a show. I found a Peels Beauty Supply, which I don't even think they do them anymore, old judging sheet from like to when I was going through my stuff yeah. from oh, wow. the early yeah. 2000s. And, um, and I, those are always my favorite part. My favorite part was always the judging sheets because I had true – um, qualified quality and like information on what I can improve on. And even though it was for competition nails, which are different than salon nails, it still helped me better in the salon. Yeah. And so, yeah. So, okay. I used to love getting our score sheets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There yeah. Were many tears. Oh God. Many. And then over the years, you guys have obviously been featured in the magazines many times for all your different things that you guys are doing. And so let's kind of go back. So in 2003, when we read the article, that was a 10-year plan, and you knew what you wanted to do within five years. So from now, do you have a change of what you want to do in the next three, five to 10 years? Oh, that's a tough question, huh? I mean, I think that we're so active and we're do we do so much traveling right now i think one of our goals is to have other people yes yeah. we're trying to connect with people in different places um to help us do these events and nail shows and classes because we've actually had to turn things down because we're already we're just spoken we're, we're for tapped because so. there's only two of us right yeah. we do have a great team um we're lucky that we can pull from our salons all of them and we like our booth in orlando we have probably 30 people that are working for us so I feel like one of our goals is not to travel less because we, luckily we do love the travel part, but a lot of help on all these others. You know, I just feel like we're spider webbing out and I, it's hard for us to get to California to do a class. We're just not as well known there. So, um, which is one of the reasons why we never did nail camp. It's like, it's nine hours for us to fly to, to Washington. Right. So it's, you know, you can only do so much, the two of us. And I think we're realizing we need a lot of key people in different areas mm -hmm. to help us grow our company. Yeah. And so that's our ultimate that goal. That is a definite bit. That's something. I mean, been... Fiji's on the calendar in 10 years. Yes. Is... <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of Fiji, sometimes you guys do get to get away and have a vacation. But do you find that you're always like secret shopping or tying it into nails that way you can well one you can write it off as a work related <laughs> but do you that. actually take true vacations and just enjoy it and just connect completely? we do we'd actually we make it a point to do at least one or two vacations a year with our family and our kids because otherwise we would never see them on vacation <laughs> we are traveling so much that people think you know oh they're on vacation again but it is fly in, stay in a hotel room, get up, set up for the booth for the next day or class. And sometimes we're splitting up because she's doing one thing and I'm doing another because we do try to keep our travel cheaper. We've learned, mm -hmm. um, get in and out, do what we got to do. 
So I feel like it's all work, you know, we're dragging suitcases and it's hard. So we decided we have to play hard or we will burn out. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's so true. And so needed. Do any of your children want to follow in and become nail techs? Well, both of my daughters have um, their nail license. Uh, my older one, she got her nail license when she was a junior in high school. So she's been working in the salon and she loves it. She has taken some additional classes like graphics design. So she's helping a little bit with our social media, um, with the website. She does flyers for me. So I definitely don't see her. Um, that I think she'll be in the salon and be taking it over. My youngest one, she's, you know, still has flights of fancy. She does have her nail license. But her newest thing is maybe psychiatry or something. But I just feel like this is such an available career for them. And we all know how teenagers are. They're like, oh, maybe I want to try something different. But mm -hmm. I, in 10 years, bet that both of my girls are still in it, running that salon. Right. Oh, yeah. And I have boys, so I'm the boy mom. Well, we have yeah. one of these boys. Well, one right of them here. is right next to you guys. And I know you can't see him, but he actually works in our warehouse helping us um, put products together, send out your orders. It's a really cute kid sending out your orders, you guys. Either that or we got PJ, our brother, also works with us. Right. And he is kind of filling and warehouse distribution. So, I mean, getting to the family thing, we do get to spend a ton of time with our family. Our mother comes in, helps us with orders. So sometimes if people get the wrong color, it's my mother. <laughs> Love you, mommy. Throw <laughs> mom under the bus. <laughs> Oh, I love it. Awesome. My son has absolutely, he wants to be a pharmacist. And I'm like, well, that's like chemistry based. Yeah, like, yes. you no, know, I could tie this in. He's like, no. And um, my daughter only in the like, well, she's in college as well. And she's already changed her mind just a couple of times. But she did ask me the other day. So like in nine weeks, I can have my nail license. And then you could really train me after that. Right. And I go, yep. yeah. So it's a first time I almost started crying right. so it first is, it time is. that my daughter oh, has shown an interest but she doesn't want to do the art and I go you don't have to do the art you can be a complete um full-time tech doing no art just simple polishes or gel polishes or toes or anything and so she she dabbles. She did her friend's toes the other day and they laughed and giggled all the time and the, I just wanted to take picture after picture because I was like this is the beginning I can feel it. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it, and it's it, it's exciting and it's like I don't know, again, these kids have grown up in the industry so it it, it wasn't like this, oh, this is what I want to do, but I think they're starting to realize this is really good. Not only you can make really good money, but if you are somebody that's taking classes somewhere else or if you have a family, I mean, you can make your own schedule. It's just such a good industry. Welcoming industry. Yeah. It's true, and but you, also, for everyone. you have to be open-minded because look at all the di the diverse clientele we yeah. get and all the stories they tell us because for some reason they were cornered. Yeah. <laughs> we have to listen. But that's also the fun of it too, is just being open-minded and, and you just don't absorb everything they say. Listen to it, don't repeat it. And just, I look at it as like an episode of another like drama show on TV. Right. And every month when they come back, it's just another new episode. And so, you know, it makes it kind of fun. Right. Hey, Anita, I know it's almost been an hour. Anita wants to know, who is your inspiration in the industry? Well, it started with Vicki. Yep. For sure. Um, and I just feel like Vicki inspired us to, A, do things the right way. Stay mm -hmm. on the professional, straight yep. and narrow, do things the right way to start with, first of all. And then meeting people along the way. I mean, Greg and Habib were a huge inspiration to us. Um, they were amazing. And we learned so much from them. And I don't know. I There's mean, so many. Every day. Oh, Trace. <laughs> oh, I love it. Every day. Seriously. It just makes us love you guys even more. Absolutely. And, you um, know, like working with all the texts that we have, I... And I, I say this every time I go down there, somebody's doing it's a different so technique or using a different product in a different way. And I'm like, oh, my God. I mean, they don't realize our techs like mm -hmm. in our home base, because I know I work with them. I learned something they from do them not realize day. how inspiring they are to yep. us. 
Yes, absolutely. Yeah. You know, it, it was interesting that Jim McConnell told me, oh, sometime last year. Oh, he's, he's, a, he's on our inspiration list, too, Oh, my God. We've had yeah. some love chats with Jim. Oh, <laughs> I can tell you, with him asking me to come on board and be a part of Light Elegance was like, That's what? Awesome. Are you talking to the right person? Like, <laughs> you met Amy Masters, right? Not like, you know, Amy McClure or something. Like, you met me, right? Like, and <laughs> yeah. And so, um, anyways, I've gotten to meet him a few times since then. And I'm, I'm actually going to be working the booth at the IBS show in That's Vegas. That's awesome. So I'm excited to be a part of that. But Jim says, in our industry, when people play with products, for instance, like the genre technique that we come up with or mixing glitter with, you know, whatever, like what you said earlier, sometimes it might be one company that has the um, additive that we like and another one has the top coat that we like, you know. Mm -hmm. Now we know what we should be mixing and things we should not like don't mix different primers and monomers and you know the that part of it right. but when it comes to art we're pretty safe on that and he said there's two types of people in the industry they're either going to think one why did you do that it's against the rules it's not it's they're the black and white people that why did you do that and he goes or they're going to see you as innovative and inspirational and he's like Amy, what you've done in the industry and just in the last few years of what I've done, he goes, I find you inspirational and I want to be a part of that. And I was like, what? And so, you know, it's it's crazy and amazing how people can try to break that confidence in you, but you could just follow true to who you are and follow the inspiration that you have. For some reason, you guys are froze on the screen. So I hope that it comes back because I'm not done with you yet. But anyways, with that, just know to follow your heart, follow your passion, you know, and get the education that you need. And, oh, they're gone. They'll come back. They'll click the click the link again and um, hopefully you guys come back on. And so I just can't stress enough that just because it's not in the rule book, um, you know, know what you can mix and and be safe for your client and stuff like that but definitely oh, um back. play be innovative oh, we're Hi. Back. Sorry. welcome back yeah i don't know what happened there yeah they wanted to take a break it said our hour was up so it just like okay, cool. oh that's why <laughs> no not really but <laughs> oh, okay not really Trace. all right well i'm sorry you can wrap i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> and so um, you know, Anita asked who the inspirations are, and likewise, I have so many, but um, you guys know that from even our last tech talk, you guys have been an inspiration for me. And part of that, you know, Amy, I hate to, you know, always, you know, give you the extra little push over, Tracy. Right. I think it's because we had the same name. <laughs> right. Amy, Amy. That's right. It spelled a little bit different, but there was something about being there at that show. And of course, Amy Becker was there as well. And watching and seeing their guys' work for all these years from the, you know, in this case, it was the 90s through and seeing where you are today and that we've pulled through and we've stayed with this. And we didn't allow, even though it's a roller coaster, sometimes in the industry of we get kind of burned out, it takes the family. It takes us um following those inspirations to stay in this for as long as we have. And so I know you guys are very much an open book. So I'm going to kind of shout this out there without your permission. But I also know that <laughs> that at the shows approach, approach Tracy and Amy. So many yes. times we get starstruck and we're like, oh, they're busy or they have too many people around them. And then later on, they message you and said, I saw you, but you had a lot of people. And you're like, push through those people. That's Go right. meet your mentors give them hugs, talk to them, use their time. That's what they're there for. And I know that you guys are both approachable like that and, and you want the same thing. So, yeah. It's one of the reasons why we do the more personal events because that is so us being on that nail cruise that we did. Yeah. It was like, you get to sit and have breakfast with your nail mentor. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, some of these smaller events, if people can get to them, those are the ones to choose. Yeah. I mean, Orlando yeah. is ridiculous. It's awesome. In a, in, a, business like, in a business sense and there's so much to offer there but if you can get to one of your little hometown events there sometimes they froze again <laughs>
Oh, darn. Well, I'll go back to the car the comments. So Scarlett, hello. Angela says, that's cool, Amy. Coming from Jim, I know that had to make you feel awesome. And yes, but you know what it took, Angela? It took me walking up to him, like what I was just saying. You know, he's somebody that I've respected a lot in the industry. Uh, Layla was over from the UK and she was like, come on, come on, come on. And we went over and introduced. And that's what it takes to make those connections. You have to put yourself out there. And um, if you guys ever see me in person, I'm kind of reserved and a little bit quiet. And so it was very, it took me a lot to do that, just so you know, but the the result was um, great. Julia says, woohoo, I'm that she's taking the profiles class at Nail Camp. And now we know that Tracy and Amy are frozen in time. But Nail Camp um, the, uh, theme was called Back to the Future. And so I think it's going to be kind of fun that you're bringing people in the industry. Like like I mentioned earlier, Amy Becker is going to be there. And all of us have been in the industry for a long time, Holly Shippers. And we, we get to share our back knowledge and bring it forward. And here's the thing. Techniques are the same. The products are similar. And so, you know, it's kind of fun no matter what you do, no matter what you use. Oh, they just texted me and said they don't they don't know. It doesn't look like they can reconnect. Well, if you guys can still hear me or anything like that, I just want to say thank you to Amy and Tracy for taking an hour out of their time this morning or this afternoon to do Tech Talk Live with us. Your knowledge and the way you mentor and inspire others is impeccable and so needed. And even though I found this article from 2003 in that magazine that I shared at the beginning of the Tech Talk, you girls are still doing that and you're doing it together. And it's amazing. And I just, I just can't express enough how inspiring you are, not only to everybody else, obviously, but even to myself. Um, so I thank you guys for joining in. Now, it's not advertised yet, but on Monday, um, next Monday, I believe it's the 22nd. So Nelly Nail said that he would come on, but he still hasn't sent me all of his information and I've messaged him a couple times. So it should still go on and I believe it's 10 o'clock mountain time in the morning, my time. He is gonna be my special guest. And um, upcoming, we have like Erica Turley, we have quite a few um, people in the industry that I look up to even more as well. And so continue to go to the events section of our group click going what should happen is facebook will will not only translate the time for you into your time zone it should send you a reminder the day before and an hour before but if you don't click going it doesn't tend to happen and then somewhere in the comments it usually says um amy is live would you like to turn on the notifications every time she's live? And if you click yes, whether I'm doing tech talks or like yesterday, I did a pop up live and just talked about spring cleaning. And um, anyways, it should send you a notification that I'm live. So if you want to be a little bit more involved with that. I'm live like a couple times a week, guys. And then I do the online workshops as well. So I'm somewhere online or you can private message me. And if there's any member that you or somebody that you want to see come on Tech Talk, private message me because, um, you know, I want I want to bring on people that you guys want to see. I keep, you know, bringing on people I want to connect with and revisit with as well. Um, so. Thank you guys for joining in. Thanks for all the great questions. And if you have any more questions, go ahead and type in hashtag replay, tag my name or Amy or Tracy's name in it so it will show up in our notifications. So tag us so that we can answer that for you or you can private message us. And so again, Tracy and Amy, I, I wish that I um, could see your face to say thank you so much, but but I know that you guys can hear me. And I just thank you so much for everything that you're doing in the industry and you're very much appreciated. I look forward to seeing you in about three weeks. And uh, obviously we'll take many more pictures so that 10, 15, 20 years from now, I can do another tech talk with you and I can um, show us again. Anyways, thanks you guys so much. Have a great afternoon.